Next question. <laughs> this is one of my souvenirs from Hajj. Anyhow. If a group speaks to a group, it doesn't convey the message. It's better one man speaks to the whole group. It's time for housekeeping. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Now, by the way, you can get the whole story on our website, shareislam.com, S-H-A-R-E-I-S-L-A-M.com. And thank you for giving me a chance to do my commercial again. <laughs> Said, it, this qu question asks about the Trinity. And then it asks about the different divisions in Christianity and their differences. And it says that these differences should point, should be the first point to start with. Oh, I thought it was a question. Oh, no. What should be the first point to start with? Oh, okay. I had my thumb over it. I'm sorry. Well, sometimes people do send up. It doesn't have a question. They just tell me what to do. I'm used to that. My wife does it all the time. <laughs> By the way, you, everybody knows who I am, right? Everybody know who I am? Huh? Yeah. No, no, no. My name's Yusuf. My name's, can you say Yusuf? <laughs> you got it right on the first time. All these years, my wife still pronounces it useless. <laughs> the Trinity is not mentioned in the Bible. Not in the Old Testament, not in the New Testament. But it is mentioned in the Quran. And I love to say it like that. Because they go, huh? I said, yes, the Quran clarifies your book for you. Let's look in the Quran and we'll find how to deal with these things. The word Bible is not in the Bible, but it's in the Quran. Many times it says kitab, 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 kitab. You know what the word Bible means? They don't know. They say, the holy book of God. No, it doesn't mean that. It comes from Greek, biblios. It means book. That's all it means. And they put a big B, just like they use a big G on God. But it means book. <laughs> We're the ones that give it the proper distinction, Al-Kitab, which means the book. And they are the Al-Kitab, people of the Bible. So, Bible is mentioned over and over and over and over, and they're mentioned, Jews and Christians, and also people of the book, with such nice reference throughout the Quran. Even some of them are called believers in the Quran. Yeah. How many of you didn't know that? Anybody didn't know that? That they were called believers in the Quran. Present tense of the verb. Some of them are believers. Yes. I'll give you one clue. It's in Surah Al Imran, chapter, 100, uh, chapter 3, verse 110. And you know the beginning of it. Kuntan khaira umatin. Ukrajet na nas. Tat maruna bil maruf. Watan hauna anhil munkar. Watut minuna bila. Ha ha ha. Somebody does know the rest of the verse. When you get a big enough crowd, you can find one. <laughs> Most of us stop right there because we didn't know. The rest of it said, and if... The people of the book had believed it would have been better for them. From them are those who have Iman. But most of them at Tharahum are Fasikun. They're Fasik. Which didn't say Kafir. It says disobedient. And that's very true. So, another question is going to come up all the time. They ask about these differences. Should we talk about their differences and so on? If you want to use that, you're going to run into a problem yourself. Because if you said, oh, okay, you guys divided up into so many groups, that should make you know right there your religion's wrong. What will you do when they point to all the divisions in Islam? What will you say? Huh? 
the Prophet ﷺ told us as the Jews and Christians divide up into so many groups, we're going to divide even more and all of them are going to be in the fire in Lawahid, except for one. And that's the one that me and my companions are on today, yes or no? So if you already know that, don't use that as a criterion because you're just proving yourself wrong. If they ask you, you tell them that's a prophecy. That's a prophecy of Muhammad that we would divide up and all of them are going to go to hell except one. Now this makes some people angry by the way when I come to this point because I wrote an article about this on the internet. It's been there for years called Groups. And everybody's happy with you until you get to the group thing and you go, eh, don't you mention my group. Oh, you can mention the Sufis and the Goofies, but don't you come to my group. Huh? Okay, Shiite, you can mention those guys. Don't you come to my group. But when they ask me again, I'll mention my, when I come back to the country, they'll ask me, are you a Sunni? I say, no, I am not. Why? Well, I'm not going to leave out the Quran. That the God we're talking about is the same one. We've already clarified that this God is not something in the creation. He is not like his creation. He's outside of his creation. You can use many of the verses in the Quran and in the Bible about that. But now we come to the word Islam and we talk about what's our relationship with Almighty Allah. And that's what's really important. Once you know there really is a God, it's logical that you should be asking, why did he create me? What is my position? What should I be doing about it? You're a Muslim. You already know what Allah said in Surah Al-Duryat. He says, وَمَا قَلَقْتُ الْجِنْ وَالْإِنْسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبَدُ he only created us to worship him. Now, did you see what I just did? Pay attention to that. I did not give Yusuf Ali's translation, nor did I give Marmaduke Pictol's translation, nor anybody else's. Because the actual translations almost always say that Allah says, that he did not, we, it's in the form of we, not no, like, you know, it's like the we, Khalakna, saying that we did not create jinn and mankind except for worship. But I didn't leave it like that, did I? I said us, and I said Allah. Now, right away, somebody who has been studying translation of the interpretation of the Quran will try to correct me. Usually, right in front of the person I'm trying to help him get to him to Islam. No, Sheikh, you left some words out. I translated it exactly the way I wanted to use it for that purpose. Why? Because if you said, we, how come Allah is we? How come there's more than one? Oh my God, what's that all about? Or our, or us, and Allah uses that in the Quran, but it's the royal we. You know that, but do you want to stop now and start explaining that to everybody? Now, if you've already done that in the beginning of your program when you were talking to them, that's fine. But what are you going to do if you didn't? Now you got to stop, digress, break it down. Royal we, the queen says, this is how the king, you know, la, 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 uh, 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 and you lost them. The bus pulls up, they get on and ride away, and you, your dawah is gone. So that's why when you're presenting it, you present the concept of what was said. And it's the same concept. What about the jinn? You didn't mention the jinn. Jinn. No, you didn't say it. Did I say us? That's included. I left the we out of Allah, but I put the we in the jinn and us, okay? And guess what? It works for the purpose. I didn't say I'm going to give you the translation of the meaning of the Quran in one session. What I said was the purpose of our <coughs> the purpose of our life is to worship Allah. That's my only point. It's still the same point. It's still valid, isn't it? Yeah. What I'm saying here is, 
don't nitpick. Don't get in such detail 